In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a vintage crab snare called the Oregon Crab Snare. Now, if you're not familiar with crab snaring, it's a really fun method of taking crabs using any heavy fishing rod and reel. In fact, it even says so on the label, the Oregon Crab Snare casts with any sturdy fishing rod and reel. Now, I found this crab snare out of a pawn shop in Kentucky on eBay of all places, but I know that this uh, product stems from Oregon. One, it says so here, the Oregon Crab Snare comes out of Depot Bay, Oregon, and two, by this diagram here. Now in California, where I'm based, you're allowed to keep both male and females, uh, but in the Pacific Northwest, you're only allowed to keep males. Here's a simple diagram that shows the sex difference between a male and a female crab. Here's the shell, here's the shell, now here's the apron, it's really wide, that's how you know it's a female, and the apron on the male is uh, long and skinny. And uh, the copy here says that you can keep males only. So that's only true for the Pacific Northwest, uh, specifically Oregon and Washington, but in California, where I'm based, you can keep both males and females. Now crab snares are pretty simple devices. They normally consist of a bait cage with uh, six lassos attached to that bait cage. When the crab comes up and tries to take the bait, you can normally feel it pulling, or if you, you know, wait 10, 15 minutes and give it a hard pull, there's a good chance that these lassos will hook onto the crab's legs or claws. Now this is a much simpler approach to that design. It consists of a simple metal ring with only four loops attached. In California, the maximum amount of loops is six, so I can actually add two to this, uh, but this one only has four, and uh, it has a bait holder hook that pins the bait to the center and uh, keeps the crabs interested while they get tangled up in the loops. Let's open it up and take a closer look. And there it is. Judging by the uh, heft of the ring itself, I'd say that the ring is made out of steel. Uh, pretty interesting design. Again, there's only four loops on this one. In California, you're allowed to have a maximum of six, so I could always add to uh, if I wanted. And uh, you'll notice that the bait holder here is a large barbed hook. Now, technically, it's illegal to catch crabs using line and hook because the DFW considers the taking of crabs by a barbed hook as a destructive method. Uh, these could easily damage a crab, and uh, they want you to, uh, you know, take crabs humanely and, uh, you know, in the most least destructive method as possible. And uh, it's really hard to hurt a crab using a thick monofilament loop like this in the event that it's uh, not a keeper. You can toss it back uh, with little harm. So uh, to counter that, um, I'm going to bait, you know, probably a whole piece of squid onto this and use a wine cork to cover the point just to ensure that the uh, crab, you know, is able to be released without harm. I don't want to uh, destroy the crab if I'm not going to keep it. And here are the original instructions that came with the Oregon Crab Snare. And again, you can tell this is an old unit based on the amount of rust that came off the staple used to pinch the package together. It says that you use a fairly heavy pole and at least 12 pounds or heavier line. You tie the line directly on a leader, attach a small piece of bait such as fish, meat, clam neck, or squid on the hook provided. You cast it into the water from the jetty, the dock, a float, or from the beach. And when action by a crab is detected, you give it a sharp jerk. This will pull one or more loops up on the crab legs and tighten them. Reel in, giving no slack. Now the biggest thing I notice about the Oregon Crab Snare is just how light it is. By itself, it can't weigh much more than 2 or 3 ounces. Now the, with a big piece of bait pinned to the hook, the whole thing is not going to weigh much more than 4 or 5 ounces. So it's definitely designed for shallow waters, uh, slow moving waters, waters uh, in protected bays. Uh, but where I Crab Snare, uh, the California coastline, uh, I don't have that. I have a lot of turbulent waters, a lot of fast moving waters, and uh, to help my cause, to help keep it from getting washed away, I'm going to add a 4 ounce pyramid weight and uh, pin it to the bottom opposite of the leader in hopes that after casting, when it hits the bottom, the pyramid pins itself to the sand and it stays put long enough for a crab to come on board. So let's take this to the coast and let's see if we can put a crab on the Oregon Crab Snare. Yeah! Hell yeah! Nice! Oregon Crab Snare! Totally works! Yeah, dude, this uh, ancient crab snare design, super simple. Just a metal ring with a hook and uh, four old mono hoops. Does the job. Nice! And there it is, the Oregon Crab Snare. A really simple design that actually catches crabs. Uh, one of the great things about this crab snare is that it's super small and super compact, and uh, you can really stack you know, multiple crab snares in your pack 
uh, when traveling and going to remote areas. Uh, one of the downsides about this crab snare is the bait hook. Uh, unlike a bait cage, you're really limited to the amount of bait that this crab snare can hold, so you really have to pay attention because you know crabs are pretty good at stealing your bait, and it wouldn't take too long for a crab to pick off an entire piece of squid from the bare hook alone. But uh, you get the benefits of you know a very compact crab snare and something that's pretty light. Um, all you have to do is pack an extra weight to make sure you get you know the casting distance that you need, and you know to make sure that the crab snare stays pinned to the bottom of the ocean. So the Oregon crab snare proof that it works not only in Oregon but beyond.